This poem is titled uh, My Life, and it's from the collection of poetry that uh, is soon to be released called uh, Growing Old in Record Time. I'm sitting in the uh, lovely convenience of my dining room, and the back room and the background is uh, playing David Bowie and uh, no, sorry, Brian Eno and David Byrne. Um, and uh, I'm going to read this poem to you called My Life. Or attempt to read this poem to you called My Life. Uh, my life started out with short rides to the crematorium. I mean church. Locked into the four walls of a Lincoln town car, my father singing Jesus is the sweetest name I know, over and over and over again. I loved the man, but not the song. But this music would redefine me. Throughout the church I would listen to the music and then drift. Hearing the melody, revitalized, reconstructed, sung by a David Bowie character in a cat suit, a droog in a zoot suit, an Indian medicine man as a power animal, shapeshifter, singing the melodies of the old church but infusing them with pagan and tribal messages, subconscious as though they may be, it was relevant to me, as relevant as the flesh-colored stockings of the girl seated four bodies down. I would watch her leg dangling there for an hour, the way it turned and flexed in the stained glass, fractured sunlight, the toes clipped and soft, the arch like architecture, and the calf supple and strong. I heard the melody through the music again and dreamed of standing between precipices of time, anchored in a Napoleonic stance, but singing music for the masses, in great waves of theory and shifting color, blind to the notion of lines and edges of paper, and then I would awake again in the car, on the way back home, seated uncomfortable again in my Sunday clothes, corduroy pants, polyester jacket, brill cream in the hair from my father's closet, back to the farm where our small colonial house stood on a small rural hill, rural hill where cats and horses defecated soundlessly out in the barn and cows fed mechanical on the grass to be butchered again and again to the drumbeat of culture and the song that Morrissey would sing meet as murder. From the hollow of my bedroom window, noticing the trees all weepy and willowed, feeling the heartbeat of their animal fellows. And then the romance, found in my mother's Harlequin novels, dribbled verse and cobbled phrases, all made for desperate fantasies, weak on reality, and based on the faith, faceless idea of the great lover. That is why the young boy either fantasizes over a poster of Charlie's Angels or cowers in the corner, replaying his first kiss over and over. And now Morrissey seems so much older, bereft of the chip upon his shoulder, there for all of us to admire when we were younger. My life started in short trips to the crematorium, I mean school, where the Christian teachers fancied themselves shaman or doctors and nurses, peddling a brand of snake oil from the backs of covered wagons, and I sat there in my indifference, in my lacoste and polo, in varying degrees of layering like medieval armor, in pinks and blues and greens and small pinstripes and broad square ties, but secretly I opened myself up to the darkness, to the melodies of Celtic madmen, to the pit and the pendulum, to gothic fantasies of knights and elixirs, and maidens needing rescuing out of high towers, to the escape of laying in the grass with her, her hair like dark tendrils of ash and smoke falling upon my chest, her milky white skin of the gods of the earth, her breasts like perfect planets, her eyes like the color of witch hazel, and what melody could accompany this? Could I find that melody in a hymnal? Could I find that melody in the old-time gospel hour, or that song? Was I a child of the devil, or was I still a child of God? And so I began to mix the elements together, creating my own elixir of fantasy and melody, a Euro-dark concoction, its bouquet-rich aroma of boysenberry and lavenders. My life became a trip to the planetarium, 
observing the stars of other galaxies, stars that were like mine own, but altogether separate, with their own constellation and firmaments, these men. William Blake, Oscar Wilde, J.R.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, Walt Whitman, Charles Bukowski, men like alien gods who preceded time and time was created for. So God created time and everything in it from the start to the finish with endless space in between infinite in design and imagination. My life started as a series of short trips to the crematorium, I mean the bookstore. Thanks for listening.